Rob here from Machine Atlas. In this video I'll be reviewing the Metabo TS254M. I've had this table saw for about eight months now so I thought it was a good time to give you a little overview of the good and a few bad things I experienced with this saw. So the TS254M is a smaller version of the old TS254 but while the old TS254 was available pretty much everywhere around the world the new M version currently only seems to be available in Europe and a few other places, but not in North America. What makes this such an interesting saw is that it's quite small, really affordable, but it still has the same 10 inch or 254 millimeter saw blade of the original TS254. While most other saws in this price range and size have a much smaller blade. In this review I'll try to cover all major aspects of this saw and at the end of the video I'll tell you my opinion on whether or not this saw is worth the money. Although it's quite a small saw, it has a pretty powerful 1500 watt motor with a few useful features like soft start, fast motor brake and restart protection. The motor is powerful enough to handle pretty much any wood you throw at it. For example here you can see the results of cutting some really hard and nutty maple. The saw did struggle a little bit, but the result was perfectly straight and actually pretty smooth. So the fence on this saw is pretty decent. What I like about it is that it locks both in the back and in the front when you push down the lever and it's pretty tight. It doesn't really move, so that's good. What I don't like about this fence is that it doesn't automatically lock itself parallel. So as you can see, there's a little bit of sideways movement possible here. And then if you lock it, it sort of goes back to the middle, but not all the way. So you're not always guaranteed to be parallel to the blade. So if you absolutely want to be sure it's parallel, you'll have to use a square. Most table saws in this price range come with pretty crappy miter gauges. But the Metawo has actually provided a pretty decent one that has a few features that we don't see on some competitors like the DeWalt or the Bosch in this price range. One of the best things Metawo has done with this miter gauge is to add these two plastic blocks that allow you to eliminate any horizontal play in the miter track. You can simply unscrew them, move the blocks left and right until you have no play in the miter track anymore. This is really helpful because most miter gauges have quite a lot of play and this leads to inaccuracies because you will never be exactly 90 degrees with the blade. Another useful feature is that the miter gauge has positive stops so you can loosen it and it will click at specific points like 45 degrees, 66 and a half and 90 degrees and you will always get the same setting every time you use it. One downside of this miter gauge, at least in my case, is that it wasn't perfectly 90 degrees with uh, the saw blade. So what I did to solve this was to add a little bit of duct tape to ever so slightly adjust the angle uh, with the saw blade. And now it's pretty close to 90 degrees. Changing the height of the saw blade is really easy and goes very smoothly with the hand wheel. There's no indicator for the exact height of the blade but I don't think this is a problem as the only case I can think of where I would really want to know the exact height of the blade would be on something like dado cuts and this saw cannot be fitted with dado blades anyway because the spindle is too short. I quite like this system for setting the angle of the blade. It uses a rack and pinion system which holds the blade in place when you set it to a specific angle. While on other saws Usually, due to gravity, the blade has a tendency to try and go back to 90 degrees. While on this saw, it really neatly keeps it in place on the specific angle you picked. 
There are also two stops at 45 and 0 degrees. But what I found quite clever was a system for cutting minus 1.5 and, and 46.5 and degrees. Instead of having to change the 45 and 0 degree stops, you can simply pull out a bolt which allows the blade to move just a little bit further. This way you can make those special cuts without losing the settings on your more used, more often used 45 and 0 degree cuts. To get access to the saw blade you simply turn a key in the blade insert which allows you to remove it. Metabo supplies a specific spanner to help you do this. The blade insert is made from metal and feels quite solid. However, it's not held down by screws, only by the key. This makes making a custom zero clearance insert more difficult. But you might be able to replace the existing screws and replace them with longer ones so that you can simply bolt the zero clearance insert down yourself. The riving knife can be adjusted quite easily both in height and in left right position. To change the height you just release a lever and to change the left right position you have to actually adjust a few bolts. The position of the saw blade itself is fixed and cannot be changed so if you're unlucky and the miter tracks are not parallel to the blade then well there's no way to adjust this. But I think this is a common downside on all saws of this type. The transparent plastic blade guard attaches to the riving knife. You simply snap it in place and then secure it with a small lever. It's a pretty simple blade guard and so far it's been doing a good job, but it is quite fragile so I'm not really so sure how long it will last in the long run. I found the dust collection to be surprisingly good, especially considering that there's only one dust board at the back and none at the blade guard. Definitely don't expect to work dust free, but it doesn't cause a big mess either. You might find a little bit of sawdust below the saw and just a little bit on the top, but almost no sawdust on the sides or the back of the saw. One clever thing Metabo have done is that they added a small rubber plate around the saw blade. And so when you first start the saw, you actually have to cut through this plate so some rubber bits may come flying out. If you don't expect this to happen, it may be a little bit scary at the first, but this is actually the way Metabo designed it. Because the saw blade cuts through this little plate, the opening is extremely small, which prevents any dust from flying back up onto the table. I can't really compare it to uh, how it would be without this little plate, but I think it makes a big difference. I'm using the TS244M purely for hobbyist woodworking, but it's also a builder saw that can be taken to a work site. And for that purpose they've made it quite portable. All parts can be stored and attached to the saw itself, including the miter gauge, fence and some spare tools. And it has a handle on one side of the saw to make it easier to carry. With 24 kilograms it's definitely not a light saw, but it's doable to carry it around. One other feature that's designed to be used on a job site is the leveling foot. On one of the four corners of the saw is a leveling foot that you can adjust to stabilize the saw on uneven surfaces. The build quality overall is pretty decent. The tabletop is solid and in my case was pretty close to perfectly straight. Although some readers on my site commented that they had some issues with non-straight tops. So this might vary between different models. The coating does seem a little weak however and it's really easily scratched both by the miter gauge and the fence. This is purely a cosmetic issue, but still a shame for the look of the machine. The finishing for most components is pretty good, but you can see they've paid more attention to the visible parts than the undersides. If you turn parts over or look at the bottom of the saw, you can see saw marks and rough edges, but I think this is to be expected for a machine at this price level. One thing they seem to have tried to save on is the quality of the bolts and screws. I noticed on several of them when you try to tighten them the top profile of the screws kind of goes away when you tighten them. So do take into account that these are really soft metals and you need to be careful when you're tightening them. So should you buy this saw? The answer is it depends. The question is how much do you have to spend and what kind of accuracy do you need? 
If you want to do extremely high precision joinery, then this might not be the saw for you. Rip cuts can actually be very accurate on this saw, but you will need to measure and set up your fence exactly every time. Miter cuts will be more difficult due to the limitations in accuracy of the miter gauge. However, with a crosscut sled, you could still probably achieve decent results. So in terms of accuracy, the TS254M has its limitations, but I still think it provides excellent value for money. It's significantly cheaper than competitors like the Bosch 635216 and the DeWalt 7485. Even with the separate sliding table, it would still be cheaper than the DeWalt. And it offers a few advantages that the other two saws don't have, like a better miter gauge, decent dust collection, which is a little bit of a problem with the DeWalt, and a significantly larger saw blade and cutting capacity than the other two saws. So if you are on a budget, I still think this saw is an extremely good choice. And although you might have some work to fix the accuracy problems, I think it's, I think it's sufficient for a saw at this price. If the accuracy problems are really a deal breaker for you, I would suggest going up a little bit in price and getting the DeWalt 7485. If you'd like more info on the Metabo TS254M, you can read the full written review on machineatlas.com. Also, if you want to keep up to date with more news and reviews of woodworking machines, consider subscribing to this channel. I've got a new video lined up on how to make a really cheap but sturdy Mardigates fence with flip stop, along with some free 3D printable design plans. Thanks for watching.